Hi guys, hope you all had a good weekend. Um, so we're on week 10, um, which, and this is lesson number one, so hopefully week 10, and we won't have a week 11, because we're into the holidays next week, and then we are back to school, all going well on April 12th to after the holidays, okay? So that is the plan, um, and I know a, couple, a good few of you email me that you're finding this one tough, the higher level part of this applied measure, and yeah, I can totally understand. Um, it is one of those topics that is best to be in a class with a set square and a T square, and we do need that on the board, and so I can show you the shapes and so on. So we'll keep going through, we'll do our best, we'll keep trying the questions, we'll keep going through the solutions as we've been doing. But when we go back, what we'll do is we'll give this an extra full week and um, going through the exam questions on um, applied measure and make sure that everyone is okay with it. I know you're okay with functions and I know you're okay with arithmetic because your exams are really, really good in that area, the vast majority of you. Um, but this one, um, just the higher level part now, mostly we're kind of keeping up, um, not a bother up to the start of last week, but this bit is particularly tricky. Um, but the exam questions are well um, manageable and I think you'll find them fine, but we'll leave them until we get back. Um, so we'd finish off this and then do the exams questions when we get back. Right, so what I asked you to do, I asked you to do these ones here, um, these five questions. So we'd go through these solutions. This is using the formula um, for cube, cuboid, and prism, and the surface area formula and the volume formula. All the formulas, remember, are in the log tables. So you do not have to remember those. So we'll do a couple of these out, 2A and 2B. We'll start, we'll start up in the t on the corner here. It seems to have the, I deleted one of the notebooks of the other classes, so it seems to be um, um, working now. So question 2A, they want us to find the volume and the surface area of this prism here. So volume and surface area of A, and then B then later on. So we'll start off with the bit that's in, in, in the pink um, circle there. So to find the volume and the surface area. Okay, right, the problem is now with this one straight away is we have a 12 and we have a 35, but we don't know this side here. So we don't know um, the hypotenuse. So when we have two sides of triangle, we need to find the hypotenuse. We use um, Pythagoras theorem to find the length of the missing side. So I'm gonna do that first. So it's going to be, um, we call it x squared, I suppose. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to one side squared, 35 squared plus the other side squared, which is 12 squared. Um, so that's going to give us um, x squared. Yeah, if I get 35 squared and 12 squared, add them together, it gives me 1,369. I don't need x squared. I want to know what x is. So I'm going to cut x is equal to the root of 1369. So x is going to be equal to 30. 7. X is going to be equal to 37. So our missing side here then, we now know it doesn't need to be a question mark anymore. Our missing side is going to be 30, 37 centimeters. So this side here is 37 centimeters. Okay, right. So that wasn't really what it asked us to find though. Um, what, the, what they want us to find here is the volume and the surface area. So we're gonna find one of those first. Probably the best one to find um, first is the, um, um, is the volume. Okay, so the, the volume is the, if, of, of, of a pyramid. You get the area of the base um, and then you multiply it by the length. Okay, so half the base but a perpendicular height to get the area of the base and then multiply that by the length. Okay, so we do it all in one. So we have, let me see, half, oops, half of the base, so it's gonna be half of 12 by the height, which is 35, by the length of the whole thing, so the length of the whole thing, which is here, by 105. So a half base by the height, multiplied by 105. So this is getting me the area of the triangle, and this is the length. So if we we're to look back to find that formula, where was that? Area of the base, so area of the triangle, half the base by the perpendicular height, by the length of the whole prism. So that's the formula I'm using here. Okay. All right. So when you put that into a 
calculator, um, it gives me 22,050. So 22,050 centimeters cubed. Okay, so I've worked out the volume of the prism. I haven't yet done the surface area. So that's the second thing I'm going to do. So what we need to do to the, for, for the surface area, we need to find, so if you think of our shape here, we have a bit here to work out, which is the same as the back part of it. You see the dots I'm, put, I'm, I'm putting in there? Same for the first one. So front and back. We have this side here. We have the side over that, um, over that side, and we have the bottom side as well. So we need to find the area of all of those different shapes and then add them together to find the total surface area. So the front and back, two triangles, two rectangles at the sides, and the, and, and, and the rectangle in the bottom. So they're the three things I am going to work out um, to find the area of this. This is st all still in part A. So this is our volume, and then we're going to work out our area still in part A. Okay, so well, the front and back are going to be the same, aren't they? 12 by 35. So you see there you have 12 by 35. Okay, so it's going to be 12 by 35. Okay. Then I'm going to have um, the right side, which is going to be 37 by 105. So I'm just calculating the area of all the different parts. So 12 by 35, 37 by, um, 100 and, um, by 105. We're going to have 12 by 105. And we have another side, which is going to be 35 by, 100, 35 by 105. There we go, okay? So you have all these different calculations to work out the, all the different surface areas. So 35 is the last one, isn't it? By 105, okay? So that's gonna give me my four, cal my, um, my four sides. One, two, the underneath, and the triangles as well. Okay? Right, so when we work, um, when we work those out and we add them up, so we're going to add all the, all those areas up, and when you add them all up, it comes to nine thousand two hundred and forty c um, cubes. So I just put it into my calculator: twelve by thirty-five plus thirty-seven by one hundred and five plus twelve by one hundred and five plus, and I use brackets the whole way along when I was doing the calculation. Just do it all in once; so you're not working them all in individually. So you get the you get the the final answer of nine thousand two hundred and forty. Okay, so the front and back, the left side, the right side, and your base, and you work them all out like that. That's how you do it for any shape. They ask you to find a surface area of um, this one here. Now, I haven't asked you to do question nine, but if they ask you to find a surface area of that one there, I need to find the area of this side, and the bottom side, and the two side panels, and then the front and the back. So I'm going to have to find, oh, I know for a fact that this one here is the same as the bottom one. The front one is the same as the back one. The side one is the same as the side one. So if I find the area of one, I can multiply it by two to get the area, even though it hasn't asked me to do that. We haven't got to do question nine, but that's how you do surface area all the time. Okay, um, we're moving on to part to, to, to B then. So 2B is this one here. We're doing the same thing again. So we found the area and the, sur the volume and the surface area of this one. Now we're going to find the volume and the surface area of this one. So it's going to be... Um, to B and I'll squeeze it in hopefully underneath here okay so to find um, to B well we're gonna have to find the the height first so we're missing what we're missing is here is we're missing the height so we know this is 15 we know one of the sides is 24 but we're missing the height because we need that same formula again don't we we need the area of the base multiplied by the length. Okay, so let's work through it nice and slow um, again. So we're looking for the height of the triangle. So same same thing again, hypotenuse squared. So we call it we call it x squared again. Is is equal to fifteen squared plus twelve squared. So that's going to work out as x squared. Nope, I'm wrong. Let me have a look at the sides again. 15 squared minus 
12 squared because the x squared starts off um, not by itself because it's not, it's not the hypotenuse. So 15 squared minus 12 squared. So what that's going to work out as is the height x squared is equal to 81. And then to get x is going to be the square root of 81 or x is going to be 9. Okay, because we have a look at that, have a, have a look at that b again. And what's the longest side? So the longest side is 24. So 24 is obviously much longer than 15. Even though in that picture, it can tend to look like they're the same. It isn't. So you have to be careful of the, of, uh, of the measurements. So we're leaving that um, as, um, as the hypotenuse, the, the 24. Okay, so... Um, moving on then, um, we're going to go on and we're going to try and find the volume of that one then. Okay, so we're sticking with the volume. So our volume is going to be half the base by the height, which we just worked out to be 9, multiplied by the length of the whole prism. So remember, it's got through nice and slow. So half of the base multiplied by the height, which we just worked out. Over slightly multiplied by the length, which is 43. You see, the 43 is so half of the base multiplied by the height, which we just worked out to be 9, multiplied by the length. That's the formula to find the volume of a prism. Okay, we throw that into a calculator, and what that gives us then is by 0.5 is 4,644 centimeters cubed. Okay, so you can see, see that pattern? They're asking for Pythagoras first to find the missing side because they know you need that missing side in order to use the volume formula. That's the extra step up. That's what's catching people out with this applied measure, applied measure higher level stuff. They're not just saying, um, giving you all the numbers and saying, right, took them into a formula which they will do in the ordinary level paper. In the higher level paper, they're gonna get you to find the numbers before you can put them into the formula. And that's where the difficulty, and that's where it makes it easier if it's on the board and we're doing it together in a class. But we will be in a couple of weeks and it'll be, it'll be a bit easier then. Okay, the second thing we have to do, we have to find the, the, the surface area. Okay, and we're gonna do this all in one go. So if we have a look, we're looking for, um, if we want to find the, if we want to find the length, the area of the bottom bit, it's going to be 24 multiplied by 43. So 24 by 43, it's our first bit we can find the area of. Second one, we're gonna say, okay, well we have um, nine is the height, nine is the height, multiplied by 24, so nine by 24. That's the width, so 24 by 9. And 2 by 43 by 15. So I'm going to put all that in one go. So we say, right, 43 by 15, which is this one here. So we're in 43 by 15 is this part here. And because we have another side, which is the same, we put in a 2 there, 2 by 43 by 15. When you try that into a calculator, it is going to give us 2,538 centimeters squared. Let me see that. Sorry, there it is there. Sorry, I hadn't got it down. So you have your different your, your, your area of one part, your area of the other part, and twice the area of the two sides. And that gives you us our surface area. Okay, that's question number two. That took a good while to get question number two done, but make sure you're you're, you're going through it uh, and, and 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 you know where you get where, where where you're getting these numbers from. Okay, I'm gonna have to get rid of that, but sure you can re-watch it in the video if needs be. Um, just so I can do question eight for you. Okay, get rid of that for the moment. 
the solutions are out in the right anyway. So if you need to, if you, if you want to have a look, I put the solutions, they're a good bit out in the right, but they're there for you if anyone needs to have a look at any of the solutions and how I worked out any of them. And that's what you should be doing. That's how you learn this, is figuring out how, on, how was that worked out and going through it step by step. And then you'll, next time a question comes up, you'll know how to do it. Right, the surface area of a rectangular solid is 506.34 millimeters squared. So in this case, they're giving us the surface area. Okay, so our surface area is 506.34 millimeters and its area. So it's going to be squared. We're looking for its height. If its length is 15 mil, so I'm just gonna write these out in the set. The length they're giving us is 15 millimeters. And it's width, they say breadth, I say width, is going to be 8.1 millimetres, like that. So we're looking for the height, okay, in question number eight. So if we think, okay, well, if we're looking, if we're looking for the height, and we, they've given us the surface area, right, so we, well, the surface area is 506.34. So the area of the whole cuboid is equal to 506.34. So we know what that means is, is that you have the front and back, the top, the bottom, and the two sides. So let's write that out. So um, we're gonna have, well, we've two front sides, so we're gonna have two times 15, so 15 by 8.1. There's our, so there's gonna be two, um, two front panels, 15 by 8.1. We're also going to have two 15 by our height. And we're going to have two times 8.1 by our height. Okay. So, and that all of this together is equal to the surface area. So if we work that out, so add that, add these three together, that's all going to give us 506.34, which is our surface area. So twice the area of the front and back, twice the area of top and bottom, twice the area of the two sides, and that gives you 506.34 millimeters squared. The problem is, is that we don't know what the H is and what the H is, and that's what we're going to find. That's what we're going to find out. Okay, so if we work those out, we're going to end up with um, 243, so I'm adding my numbers, and that's going to give me 243 plus 46.2 H, and that's equal to 506.3. Four. So to get to two hundred and to get to two hundred and forty-three, I've I, I, I've just added up the numbers, and I've multiplied every I've multiplied everything beside the h to give us forty-six point two h, and that's equal to the total surface total um, surface area. Okay. So if we work that out, then so what you're going to do is you're, we're, we're going to bring our two hundred and forty-three over here and change its sign. So that's going to give us 46.2H is equal to 506.34 minus 243, or 46.2H um, is equal to 263.34, which means you're going to have your height is going to be 263.34 all over 46.2, or your height is going to be 5.7 millimeters. So let's go through that really quickly again because I know it's complicated, right? So what I've done is I've said, right, they've told us in this question a rectangular solid. So I would assume it looks something like this cube, cuboid type thing. They've told us the surface area of this is 506.34. So what I needed to figure out, what they also told us is, is that the length of it is 15. 
the, the, the width of it is 8.1, but they don't tell us what the height of it is. So this is what I'm just showing you, what, how, how I work this answer out. So what I needed to figure out is I want to know what's the area of the panel here. And that's going to be the same here as the, as the back panel. Then I need to work out the side panel, which is going to be the same as the, as the side panel over here. And finally, I need to work out, so um, I saw the front and back, the two sides, um, and I need to work at front, front, back, two sides, and top and bottom. So this is gonna be five, and then six is gonna be underneath here. So that's what I did there. I multiplied, so I'm gonna have twice, 15 by 8.1. So that's gonna give me my, um, my top and bottom. Twice, 15 by, H, that's going to give me my front and back. So top and bottom, front and back. And this one here is going to be my sides. So um, 8.1 by H. So that's where I got those numbers. I'm just showing you where I got those numbers from. I multiply 8.1 by H to give me this panel and these panels over here. And I added all those up. And that gave me, finally, H is equal to 5.7. It doesn't matter what the shape, cube, cuboid, that's how you do those. Okay, um, after that then, I'll just do um, one more. Again, all the solutions are over on the, on the, on the right-hand side. So we just have a quick look at um, question number 17. It's just one more, and you can check the solutions to 13 and 19 yourself. They're, 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 all, they're all pretty much the same. Okay, so let's have a look at question 17. 17 is here. 17 is here. 19 is a complicated one. It might be questions about this, but um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it if needs, if needs be. So, 17. An ornamental pond in the shape of a cuboid is shown. The pond, when three quarters full, has 240 litres of water. I'm just going to write that down um, before we start, just as, as we go through it. So basically they're saying, if it's, if it's three quarter full, that means it holds 200 and... Not 200... 240 litres. If the length of the pond is 1.2 metres, so I always like to write them down as I go along, is 1.2 metres, and the width is 80 centimetres. Right, they're saying um, 80, I'm going to go 0 0.8 metres, just for the sake, because the, the, the length is in metres. Find the depth of the pond. Okay. So they're saying, right, we have a pond... Which is like it, like that, and they're saying that. Um, so obviously this is three D. So yeah, you know me and drawn. Okay, that's like like a pond, but you get you get what I mean. Um, the length of the pond is one point two meters. So one point two meters. The width is eighty centimeters. So zero point eight meters. They want us to find the depth. So we're looking we're looking for this here. What's the depth? of the pond so d for depth um okay so let's have a go at that right so um well if three quarters holds 240 liters well one quarter so if three quarters so that means one quarter is going to hold so divide 240 by three that is going to hold 80 liters and that means four quarters, so the full pond, not four, it's only about four quarters, um, the, the full, full pond is going to hold 80 by four, which is going to be three, 160 and two is 320 litres. So 320 litres is our full pond. So um, if we want to work out then, the, the 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 volume of something like this it's length by width by height okay so if we say right well it's going to be 1.2 by the width 0 0.8 by the height is going to be 240 liters it's going to be 200 and 40 liters. Now because we're in meters, meters and liters don't mix, so this should be in centimeters cubed. So 240 liters 
is 240,000 centimeters cubed. That's the conversion from the top of the chapter. So it's going to be equal to 240,000. Um, how many liters is in total? 320, sorry, 320,000. So 320 liters is equal to 320,000 centimeters cubed. Okay, so we try and work that out then. It's going to be, so if, if we have 1.2, that's going to be 120 going to centimeters, we're, we're, we're going to um, centimeters, because we're dealing with centimeters cubed, we have to deal in centimeters here, by 80, by the height, which is equal to 320,000, like so. So what that's going to be is h is equal to 320,000 all over 120 by 80, which means that the height is equal to 33.333, third and a third centimeters. That's going to be our depth. So our depth is going to be 33.333. Centimeter. And it's a pond, so you're not going to want it to be, you know, it's not going to be something massive like that. Okay, if you left it, if you left it and you didn't go to 120 and 80, you can, you'll still get the same um, answer. Okay, just a quick look at question 19, because people, will, and I know people will be asking what the story is of question 19, because it is, um, it, it can be tricky enough if you, if, if, if you don't remember quadratic equations. So it's a kind of an extra, extra bit of algebra in this one. So we just have a quick look at it. Um, I know this is quite a long lesson, but... Um, it'd be worth it. A rectangular tank with no lid. Okay, so that's important. There's no lid. They're giving us the surface area again. SA, 440 centimetres squared. Area squared. Has a length of 15 and a width of X. We don't know. The height of the tank, this is important as well, is two and a half times its width. So I'm going to, before I even look at sums and things like that, so our... Our, um, our, our surface area, they're saying, is 440 centimetres squared. Our length is going to be 15 centimetres. Our width is going to be X centimetres, they're telling us. But our height is two and a half times the width. Okay, so our width is X. Our height is going to be two and a half X's. So the width is x, and the height is going to be two and a half times the width. So I'm just subbing in just to show you, and uh, before I even look at the question, looking for the capacity, they're looking for the volume. Volume is a fancy name for um, um, capacity. Or capacity is a fancy name for, uh, a fancy word for volume. Okay, so let's have a look at that then, right? So if we um, think of the, to, 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 find, to find the surface area of this first, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to work out the length by the width. So remember, remember, only have to do one length by width because it has no top. Twice the length by the height, twice the width by the height, and we're going to let that equal to forty. So we're going to work out the surface area first. So our surface area in this case, if we think of what this is going to look like, I'm just going to just if I was to do a real quick sketch. This is something. Um, oh, sure, it's done here for us, is it? Is that a seventy fifteen? No, it's not. So th um, they're saying it's some sort of tank like this again they're saying the length is 15 the width is going to be x our height is two and a half x and we're looking to find the volume of it so we know that's going to be two and a half x the width over here is going to be x um, this is going to be two and a half x so we know the height we know a version of the height Okay, so let's try and work it out then. So if we say, right, let's, work, let's do um, the length by the width. So it's going to be 15 by x, length by width. That's going to give us the, that's going to give us the side. Then we're going to have two 15s by two and a half x. So twice the length by the height. So again, I'm just doing all the different sides. Plus 
twice the width by the height. The height is what do we say is two and a half x. And all of this, when worked out, is equal to 440 because they've given us that. They've given us the area at the start. It's going to be equal to 440. Okay. So now this, this, this is where the problem comes. So when I work all of that out, so I've so 15 by x. I'm going to get rid of my draw, rid of my drawing for a second. So I'm going to work this out. So this is going to be 15 x. Um, and that's going to work out as 75x plus 5x squared, which is equal to 440. So I've worked that out. Um, 15x, 75x, and this one works out as 5x squared. So 2 by 2.5. And um, x by x is 5x squared. Okay, break that down. 5, 15x and 75x gives us 90x plus 5x squared is equal to 440. Make it into a quadratic. So we're going to have 5x squared plus 90x. Um, 5x squared plus 90x minus 440 is equal to 0. And then we can divide the whole thing down. So we can divide 5 into, into everything. So 5 into 5x, 5 into 5x squared goes x squared. 5 into 90 goes 18x. 5 into 440 minus 88 is equal to 0. Okay. So um, let's try and work it out. Now, I don't know how I, Miss, Miss um, Connolly would have done this with you. I do quadratic equations should be a plus, not an, eight, not an equals. I do quadratic equations um, like this. I get x by x and cross, and then I break down the, um, the 88. So something by something gives me 88. So if I went, for example, 88 and 1, that would be 1 multiplied by x gives me 1x, and x by 88x, 8 by 88 gives 88x, and I look to find the middle number. That's not going to work. 88 and 1 is not going to work. I'm going to look for different factors. Let's throw them in. Um, let's try 22 and 4. So if I multiply 22 by x, gives me 22x. And 4 by x gives me 4x. So 22x minus 4x gives me what I'm looking for, 18. So they're going to be my factors. So what that's going to give me is, is x minus 4 is 0, or x plus 22 is 0. So our answer is going to be x is 4, or x is minus 22. And the fact that it's a minus number, it can't be a minus number. So our answer is going to be x is equal to 4. So you take the one that's, that can be possible. Because it can't be, you can't have a negative volume. Um, it holds less than no water, for example. Okay, so that's our that's going to be our height. So we have to work in our height. Um, so our height um, is going, to, or sorry, we're going to have to work in our width. So our, um, if, we, if, we, if we go back down and we say, right, our width was X centimeters up here. Well, our width, now we know, is going to be actually four centimeters. And we wanted to know our height. So our height is going to be two and a half times x so two and a half times four which is going to be 10 centimeters so we worked out our width and we worked out our height is that the question the last part um no we're asked to find the we're asked to find the capacity of the tank so we've got a small bit small bit more to do so we have to finish it off by by doing um, capacity is going to be so your um, your length by your width by your height. So that's going to be well, our our length was fifteen by ten by four, which we worked out up here, which is going to be six hundred centimeters cubed. Six hundred centimeters cubed. Did I ask for in anything in liters? So six hundred centimeters cubed. is equal to 
0.6 liters. That's a serious question, guys. Um, I'm going to look at that and you're going to go, oh my, I'm a genie. But it, it, um, it's a really good question because it brings in quadratic equations and stuff like that. I'm just checking the answer to make sure. Yeah, it's right. Um, it brings in quadratic equations and it is... Um, um, a really really good test to see can you go can you use the formulas but can you manipulate the formulas can you find missing numbers for the formula even when some of the even some of the measurements they give you are not in um are in actually algebraic form like x and two and a half x so it is a seriously challenging like you know one of those questions that people give out about it but it was asked in the junior search but um as i said um we, we're going to keep rattling through this go through it as quick as we can um, um, and then we, we give this a good look at the exam questions when we go back and I think you'll find that yeah it's actually um, not so bad um, once you kind of get used to using the log tables and all those different formulas okay let's go on and have a look at one quick thing for, 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 for today well two actually if you don't mind two quick things for today I know this is a long one um, more formula but again in the log tables right so we want to find the we want to find the volume of um, a cylinder okay you know this one pi r squared h you remember that before volume of a cylinder pi r squared h okay to find the surface area now in particular see the bit that wraps around here it's called the curved surface area so not the top and the bottom but the curved surface area the formula for that for the csa curved surface area is 2 pi r h okay so your volume is pi r squared h but if we're looking for the curved surface area is 2 pi or h. So, if we want to find the total surface area of a cylinder, we have to use the formula for the curved surface area and 2 pi r squared. So where's the 2 pi, where's pi r squared? That was something different. That wasn't nothing to do with a cylinder. That was something to do with a circle. It was. It was the formula. So if you wanted to find the, form, the, the, the area of a circle, it was pi r squared. It's 2 pi r squared because on a cylinder, you have a circle up top and a circle on the bottom. So we want to find the, if we want to find the surface area of something that looks like this, we need to find the surface area of this curvy bit. So this bit that goes around... And we need to find the surface area of our circle and the circle in here. So this is how we do it. Have a look at that formula again. This formula here, to find the total surface area of a cylinder, this is the surface area of the two circles on both ends. And this is the surface area of the curved bit. So you're going to find the surface area of the curved bit, the area of the two circles, and you're going to add them together. And that will allow you to find the surface area of a cylinder. And here's an example done now for you really quick. I'll just fly through it really quickly. We just do one. So if we're if we're looking for the um, the volume, the curved surface area, and the total surface area of a cylinder, radius four um, and a height of eleven. So they're giving you the radius here. They're giving you the um, the the height. So we'll we 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 we'll just do it where they let pi equals three point one four. So we're doing part. Have a look at part B. So if we want to find the volume of a cylinder, it's just pi or squared h. You've used it before. Pi or squared and the height is 11. And that gives you the area in cubed, centimeters cubed. This is the new bit though. These two parts here are our new bits that I wanted to focus on today. Our curved surface area and our total surface area. Okay, so first to find the curved surface area, here's your formula, the curved bit. We have 2 pi or h. Look at the, look what they do. 2 by pi, by the radius, by the height. And it gives you that in squared, centimeters squared, because it's area. Total surface area then, we've worked out two pi or h. We know that's equal to 276.32, and there it is carried on down there. But what they're also gonna add in here is this two pi r squared for the two circles. So you're gonna have two pi r squared. And at the end was when you've worked out the area of the two circles, add them together to give you 376.8. The other one I want you to have a look at is the volume of a sphere. This is not too difficult, but they can ask you to work out the radius. They can give you the volume and ask you to work out the radius. They can um, ask you to do a, the volume of a hemisphere or a quarter of a hemisphere um, or a quarter of a, of, a, of a sphere. So we kind of need to know how to use the formula. So the volume of a sphere, 
four thirds pi r cubed. Again, in the log tables, you don't need to remember it. The surface area of a sphere, four pi r squared. So it's, it's always pi something, isn't it? The volume of a hemisphere, you think, well, if the volume of a full sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, well, the volume of half a sphere is going to be two thirds pi r cubed. So it's half of half of a sphere. So half of four thirds is two thirds pi r cubed. To find the surface area of a hemisphere, okay. So to find the surface, uh, the curved surface area of a uh, of a hemisphere. So that's all your all your area here, your curved surface. It's the bit that goes all the way around the outside, the curved bit, same as you had in the cylinder. Another formula: two pi r squared. So two pi r squared. And if you want to find the total surface area then of a hemisphere, you think about it. Here, all the pink there. Well, whoops. All the pink bits there are your curved surface area. But if you want to find the total surface area, you need the curved bit and you also need this circle on top. So you're going to have to find the, um, the curved surface area and this one is going to be the, just the area of circle. So let's have a look at the two formulas. Well, there is, there's the area of a circle there, pi r squared. That's going to find your, your top bit. And your curved surface area, as we had over here, is just going to be 2 pi r squared. So you add 2 pi r squareds and pi r squareds, it's going to give you 3 pi r squareds. Or you could sub in for the radius if you knew it, and you could sub in for pi if they tell you to do that. Okay, and there's just two examples there um, um, of, 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 using those, of using those formulas. So you have your, your volume and your surface area. So if you want to find the volume of a sphere, there's your formula there. Um, just sub in. They use 3.14 for pi. That's going to give you your volume there. And for the surface area, 4 pi r squared, which is going to give you there. So you're just subbing in. and You're well used to using these formulas. Again, the second example there, they, they, it, it, it's a hemisphere. So the volume of a hemisphere is the same. They go from, you see there, it's, it's, it's 4 thirds. That goes to 2 thirds. But same, sub in. In this term, they're leaving it in terms of pi. So pi is not subbed in for, it's in your answer there. For part B, they're looking for the curved surface area. There's your formula for curved surface area. It's in the log table. You don't have to remember it. They're not summing in for pi. And your answer's in squared when you're dealing with area. And your total surface area is your answer to part B. And you know, they want the area of the circle bit on top as well. Sub in, and it gives you that. They haven't subbed in for pi again. Okay. One more uh, quick example. Um, sorry, I never went down to that. I'm doing it on the iPad. That's why. Sorry, sir. Um, just really quickly again. I, I just never flick down on the on the on the Mac. So and yeah, um, this is just using the formulas that I just um, that I just went through here. Okay. So you have four thirds pi r cubed for the full sphere. You have two thirds pi r cubed for the set for the um, the hemisphere. You um, have curved surface area, and then you have your total surface area. So you see the curved surface area is one six two pi. And you sub that in and add it on to pi r squared because this is the area of your circle up top to give your total surface area. Remember, guys, that can seem tricky, but all these formulas are there for you. You can bring them into the exam with you. It's just knowing which one to use when. So your last example here is this one here, or a practical example. A test tube consists of a cylinder joined to a hemisphere. Okay, so you see down here you have a, um, a hemisphere and this part here is a cylinder. You have two different parts. Total length is 13.5 centimeters. So you can see there, that's the total length. Now the whole yoke is 13.5. And the diameter, be careful, diameter is seven. Calculate the height of the cylindrical part of the test tube. So they want the height of the cylindrical part. So they're basically what they're looking for is from here up to the top. The total volume of the test tube in terms of pi. Okay, so. Well, the diameter is seven, so they, they, they get that out of the way quick. Diameter is seven, half that to get the radius is three and a half. The height of the cylinder, okay, well, we know the radius is 3.5. Well, if the whole thing is 13.5, and we know the radius of this is going to be 3.5, then we can say, well, the height of the cylinder is going to be, what, 13.5 minus 3.5 is going to be 10. Okay. 
And the B part then is the total volume of the test tube in terms of pi, they say there. So they're not looking for us to sub in for pi. So if we, if we, we use the formula for the volume of a, um, a volume of a cylinder first. So pi r squared h, here it is here. Sub in pi r squared h. Don't sub in for pi because it says in terms of pi. That works out as 122.5 pi centimeters squared. Then we get the volume of the hemisphere bit. So remember, a volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The volume of a hemisphere then is 2 thirds pi r cubed, or 2 thirds pi r cubed. That works out as 27, 28 and 7 over 12 pi centimeters squared. So now we go and we say we're looking for the volume of the whole thing. We've worked out the volume of the cylinder part. We've worked out the volume of the hemisphere part. So we take the volume of the, cyl of the cylinder, add it to the volume of the hemisphere, and that then gives us the volume of the whole thing. They leave pi in the answer. We don't actually get a proper answer they, um, because they told us in terms of pi in the question. So they could say sub in 3.14, sub in 22 over 7, but um, they don't. They say in terms of pi, so leave the pi in the answer. Okay, so um, spheres, hemispheres, um, things like that. I've given you a couple of questions and um, very, very like the ones that um, we've just gone through there in the last couple of minutes. So curved surface area and the total surface area, you have an example like it, give it a go. Um, question four. Question seven is a metal solid, but it is a cylinder. They're looking for the volume of the cylinder, pi r squared h, leave pi in the answer. They melt down a number of these. How many cylinders must be melted down to make a sphere of radius 25 millimeters? So you're going to have to use the volume of a sphere formula and see, well, how many of these would you need to make a sphere of volume uh, of, of radius 25 millimeters? So good question, but you're using the, the formula for the volume of a sphere. Um, question 10 is very similar, like an upside down test tube, like the, the example we um, did before. Um, it's, it's a lighthouse as opposed to a test tube, the, the measurements are much bigger. You, this time you're subbing in 22 over 7, but you're looking for the surface area. So the surface area of the whole, of this whole um, lighthouse there, and you have a cylinder there, and you have a, um, um, a hemisphere on top. So you're dealing with TSA, total surface area. After that, tennis balls in a tennis ball box. So you're looking for the volume of the, of the what are you looking for? Radius, finest volume. So you're looking for the volume of a tennis ball first. Then you're looking for the radius and height of the cylinder, the tube, the volume of the tube. And then you're looking for the fraction of volume over the tubes taken up by the three balls. So you'll know what's the volume of the balls over what's the volume of the tube by 100 over 1 to give you the answer to that. So I'm trying to give you a bit of a dig out in uh, getting these questions because I know some people are finding them tough. Um, but like I said, guys, just as you're going through these now, give it between now and Wednesday, 40 minutes. That's it. Don't be panicking over these and worrying about them and, and, and telling me you've been up till 10 o'clock doing these questions. No, that's not um, what we need. It, it, when we're in class and we're going through these, it'll be much easier. So you're not to be panicking. Give them a good, honest attempt at each question. And that's good enough for me. And I'll, I'll fill in the gaps then when we get back into the room. You'll find that exam questions are much more manageable than some of these. These are kind of, some of these are worst case scenario kind of questions. Um, the last one is then you have an ornament, um, sphere, cube or cuboid, sphere, cube or cuboid. Are you looking for the length of one of the cubes, the volume of the ornament, um, what percentage, and another one of them then, what percentage is carved away? So you're going to have a full cuboid and what percentage is um, actually part of the ornament and what's not. So it's going to be um, the percentage of what you have over the percentage, of, over the volume of the whole cube multiply by 100 over 1 to get your answer. So give those a shot. Um, any questions in the meantime, you can um, let me know um, and we will go through those answers on Wednesday. And then we haven't got an awful lot more um, to do. We, I think we've two or three more things to do and we hope to finish this so we can do the exam questions and make this a lot easier to manage once we get back after the holidays. Okay, guys, have a great week. Um, email me if you, if you have any issues or you need a hand. Um, I can um, add in an audio message to talk you through any question. If any one of them is really getting, um, is, 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 is annoying you or you're having trouble with it. Um, if not, 
we'll go through it on Wednesday and then we'll have our live again on Friday morning, our last online live, hopefully, um, before we go back to the lab. Looking forward to seeing you all in person in, in the class. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.